Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. We are just about ready to get started. My name is Chris Warman. I am a program officer at the Baltimore Community Foundation. I'm joined by my colleagues, Billy Malcolm and Maya Smith. And today we'll be, we will be sharing more about the latest version of our neighborhood grant making program, which we refer to as our Stronger Neighborhoods Grants Program. As we get underway, a few reminders. This session is being recorded and will be posted to our Grant Seekers FAQ on the BCF website. We will be sticking to the screen share for the presentation, but your name and face may be visible during the question and answer portion of the presentation. We ask that all participants remain on mute for the duration of the presentation. The meeting was set to mute entrance upon default, and BCF staff may mute you if, you pick up, if we pick up background noise from your feed. Lastly, we ask that you please hold your questions until the end of the presentation. If you are worried about forgetting your question, please feel free to drop it in the chat, and we will reference it during the question and answer portion of the presentation. Here is what you can expect from today's presentation. We'll start with an overview of the new focus areas for BCF's Stronger Neighborhoods Grant Program. We will then move on to a review of our of our revised application requirements, followed by a discussion of what successful grantees should expect from our reporting process. Now, this portion of the presentation should take approximately 20 minutes, and then the remainder of our time has been set aside for question and answer session. So let's begin. Uh, we have gathered today to share with you some recent changes to our grant making program. BCF's grant making has always focused on serving Baltimore schools and neighborhoods, and that will continue to be the case under this new version of our program. However, our board has directed us to make a few changes that will refocus how our grants are awarded. First and most importantly, this new plan emphasizes BCF's role as a regional grant maker. BCF's grants have always been available to projects and programs across Baltimore City and Baltimore County. However, in this new version of our program, there will be no grant dollars reserved to serve targeted or selected communities. While we are broadening geographic access to our grant program, we will now require that all our awarded grants support projects and programs that benefit specifically identified neighborhoods. While a proposal may aim to serve multiple neighborhoods, proposals servicing broad geographies that do not align with specific neighborhoods, such as congressional or city council districts, zip codes, or overly broad descriptions like all of East Baltimore will not be accepted. In part, this is because we want every proposal to be able to clearly demonstrate resident buy-in for their project or program. We believe that community members are the experts on what their neighborhood needs, so every proposal must have clear community support or be led by the residents themselves. Finally, to, to try to maximize our impact, BCF has focused in on certain kinds of projects and programs our neighborhood grants will support. These categories may be familiar to our longtime grantees. We are exclusively looking for grant proposals that help make specific neighborhoods safer, cleaner, greener, and more vibrant. So let's dig in a little further into what each of these qualities means. Safe. Our board has placed a strong emphasis on supporting projects and programs that help make neighborhoods safer. However, we recognize that safety needs vary a lot from neighborhood to neighborhood. Again, we believe residents are the experts on what their neighborhood needs, and we are open to a variety of interpretations of what a safe grant looks like. BCF has supported projects ranging from relationship management and wraparound support for populations at risk of gun violence to street murals that promote pedestrian safety. Clean. Neat communities 
promote resident health and pride of place. BCF has supported community cleanups and recycling information programs, but we are interested to hear what residents believe they need to keep their neighborhood clean. Green. Plant life and environmental sustainability in our neighborhoods are key to ensuring the health of residents and the resiliency of our communities in the face of climate change. BCF has supported community gardens, urban farms, and community events promoting renewable energy, biodiversity, and gardening. We are excited to see how residents bring this important work to their own neighborhoods. And vibrant, the things that make a place your place. Festivals, community art, and support for small businesses turn a neighborhood into a community by fostering connections between neighbors. Resident experts know best what a neighborhood needs to be a desirable place to live, work, and play. One point of clarity about all of these, we often talk about projects and programs, but it can also be necessary for neighbors to organize and advocate for their interests to public and private decision makers. For example, residents may advocate for a new road diet, for a polluter to be held accountable, for improvements to their local park, or to establish a Main Street organization for their neighborhood. As long as it is resident-led, BCF would love to hear proposals about advocacy efforts in these four areas as well. Let's talk about the application and what to expect. First, how do you get there? Our application portal is hosted on the BCF website, bcf.org. You can access our application and several other information pages about grants programs right from the homepage. At the top of every page of our website is a navigation bar. To access our application, you can hover over grant seekers and head to the Stronger Schools and Neighborhoods Grants option. You can either click there and navigate through our pages or access any individual page directly on the immediate right. Among those options is apply for a grant. If you are accessing our site through your phone, there will be a button with three horizontal lines, also known as the hamburger button, in the top right corner of the screen. Again, touch Grant Seekers to access these same links. As for the actual application, the BCF team has tried very hard with this new version of our questionnaire to cut the fat and only ask you exactly what we need to know to determine if your proposal is a match. In addition to basic questions about organization information, contact information, and proposal budget and timeline, we have three narrative questions that we would like for you to address. The first narrative question is your opportunity to lay out your project or program. While you can include any information that you feel is pertinent and fits in the character count, we have specifically highlighted four elements that we would like to hear about. Need, tell us what problem you are trying to solve or what opportunity you are trying to seize. Population. Tell us who exactly your proposal will benefit. Impact. Tell us what difference your proposal is intended to make. Success. Tell us what you will measure to determine whether you created the impact that you set out to. Show us that you are an expert. The second question is your opportunity to show how your community has come together in support of your proposal. As we mentioned earlier, residents are the experts on what their neighborhood needs. This is your opportunity to explain how residents contributed to the creation of your proposal, or at least rallied in support of it. The BCF team is open to the support coming in many forms. A letter of support from a neighborhood association, faith institution, or small business group. A petition of signatures from neighbors. Participation numbers from similar previous programs or perhaps something else altogether. You can also provide optional attachments as necessary. Show us that the neighborhood wants your program to come to life. Finally, the third question. 
A principle of BCFs that underlies all of our work is a commitment to address racial inequity in Baltimore. As part of that effort, we encourage all of our grantees to think about that work through that lens. There is not an expectation that our grants will quote unquote solve racial inequity. And there may be some neighborhood proposals that simply do not address these issues at all. We do invite you to try and make at least a small impact. Lacking a racial equity angle on your project will not result in automatic rejection, but it may be a factor when deciding between multiple projects to support with limited resources. Please note, these questions represent a first impression for your proposal. The BCF team may follow up to dig in on any specific points with you as we make our case to our board to support your proposal. In addition to the narrative questions, we do require applicants to provide a few attachments with their submission. Again, we've tried very hard with this new version of our questionnaire to cut the fat and only ask you exactly what we need to know to determine if your proposal is a match. We require the project budget, a basic document outlining both the expenses and sources of support for the project. And the sources of support should make clear which have already been committed and which are still pending. The 990, whether it is a 990N, 990EZ, or 990, 501c3 organizations are required to submit this report annually to the IRS. Please send us a copy of your or your fiscal sponsor's most recent submission. List of key staff and board members. This is pretty self-explanatory, but if possible, please provide contact information where available on this list so we have a second point of contact for your proposal if needed. Finally, the fiscal sponsor letter of support. This is only required if your proposal is fiscally sponsored by another 501c3 organization. This letter should confirm your fiscal sponsor relationship. As I mentioned earlier, you are also welcome to provide additional documents you feel are necessary. For example, that copy of a neighborhood association letter of support for your proposal. Please note again, these attachments represent a first impression for your proposal. The BCF team may follow up to dig in on specific points with you, particularly on your finances, as we make our case to our board to support your proposal. To quickly answer some very frequently asked questions about what to expect from your proposal, how often does BCF award grants? Grant proposals are considered by our board on a quarterly basis. BCF staff may consider smaller applications on a more frequent basis. As of right now, grants smaller than $5,000 fit this more frequent basis designation. However, this policy may change at the direction of our board, and we would encourage you to check our website in the future for current expectations. What is BCF's typical grant award? Our average grant size is $20,000 though we also support plenty of grants that exceed that amount. Many neighborhood projects receive between one and $5,000 in grant support. Grant awards are considered on a case-by-case -case basis and may be influenced by the amount of funding that remains available for BCF to award. When can I expect to hear back? When can I expect to confirm my grant award? When can I expect to receive my grant? You should expect to receive an automated email confirmation of your submission immediately after submitting. You can expect a BCF team member to follow up with you within two weeks of your submission with follow-up questions. Award confirmations for larger grants are made available as soon as possible following our board's decision, with grant agreements and check cutting taking place soon after. Please see our website for a table of the current year's dates. Finally, our reporting expectations. More than 95% of our grantees are expected to complete our standard grant report form within one year of executing their grant agreement. This report form consists of four questions and is submitted directly through our website. To reference again, this can be accessed through the homepage navigation bar by hovering over grant seekers, 
and heading to stronger schools and neighborhood grants. As you can see, one of the options on this menu is BCF Grant Report Form. If you are one of the rare grantees that must submit a special grant report, the details will be outlined in your grant agreement. Our standard grant report form consists of some basic identifying questions, which we, you will either know or can be referenced from your grant agreement, and four narrative questions. The first question is your opportunity to explain what you are able to accomplish. Perhaps you achieved exactly what you set out to do, perhaps more, perhaps less. No matter what, we want to hear how you did. If possible, we would like for you to provide some numbers to share with our board. If you are able to quantify changes in behavior, for example, a percentage decrease in speeding vehicles for a pedestrian street mural project, that would be very, very welcome. But at the very least, help us quantify what you achieved. For example, the number of doorbell cameras distributed to neighbors, of pounds of trash collected by your community, of trees planted, of attendees at your festival. We want to hear how BCS grant was ultimately spent in the second question. This can be fairly broad strokes, but we should have a clear idea of how you use the funds and what the plan is for any unspent funds. The third question is your opportunity to reflect on your project or program. We want to know that our grantees are using our grants to think about how they, how they can do what they do better. This section is especially helpful if you did not fully accomplish what you set out to do. A thoughtful answer here can make future grant requests easier for the BCF team to justify. Finally, our fourth question is optional, but we love to share stories about projects and programs that are making meaningful impacts in Baltimore's neighborhoods. By completing this question, we may ask to feature your project on our social and print media communications. That is the extent of our prepared presentation. Thank you for joining us today. I've been Chris Warman, joined by my colleagues Billy and Maya. Before we turn over for questions and answers, please see our photos and emails here. Email is the best way to consistently get in touch with our team. We are routinely out in the community and may be irregular in following up with voicemails. With that, I'm going to end the presentation and open the floor for questions. We have a lot of folks here today, so if you could please use the raise hand function to indicate you have a question, it can be accessed at the bottom of your Zoom screen with the reaction button. We will call on people one at a time and respond to questions in the chat. Thank you. Anybody have any questions they'd like to raise? Hi. So um, we can email you, and um, you're going if we have questions, and, and you're going to send us um, a link to uh, for us to watch this video again if we find it, that it would be good to review it. Yes, absolutely. Um, in the very near future, we will post this video to our website in the Grant Seekers FAQ page. Um, so you'll be able to, to watch the video for future reference. And yes, email is the best way to get in touch with us. I know we have Thank several people come in a little later, um, so we will definitely be posting this video. Yeah, I actually lost my link, so I saw the first part and then I got back again after a few minutes. Okay, thank you. I have a question in the chat. Are there any specific restrictions on one, on what funds cannot be used for? Um, thank you for that question, and that's one of the frequently asked questions listed on our website. Uh, generally speaking, BCF does not support capital campaigns. Um, that's probably the biggest sort of question mark. Uh, religious and sectarian purposes are also a, a barrier for us. Um, I think another point is that this new strategic plan for us is not a, a good match for capacity building grants. Um, and operational support may also be a challenge. So we're specifically looking for project and program support for the most part. 
Um, Billy or Maya, would anybody, would, anything else to add to that list? Um, we cannot support individuals. So you have to you have to have a 501c3 or you need to have a fiscal sponsor, um, fiscal agency, because we do get a lot of individual requests and we cannot support you, unfortunately. And I would probably add as well that you see what the four goals are, clean, green, safe, vibrant. Um, people want to know what they can spend money on. We are open to how you spend the money to achieve that goal. But your narrative has to align. Um, so, you know, a lot of times we get questions about affordable housing and, you know, that's not a neat bucket in this grant making. So you would have to align that to our four grant priorities should, you know, you want us to consider something around that area. I see Erica has her hand raised. Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, just a quick question. I'm not sure if you had mentioned it in um, the presentation, but what's the time frame for the money to be spent if it is awarded? Is it a one year time frame or two years? Yes, uh, by default, our grants are uh, one year grants, but we're open to uh, you know we're open to longer periods of time. Um, so that's our default, but we're we're open to other conversations as well if if more time is needed. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'm going to alternate back and forth between raised hands and questions in the chat. So let me do a, a chat question next. Can organizations with both school-based and community-based programs submit to both the neighborhoods and schools opportunities? Um, I don't think there is any reason you could not submit to both. Um, there's no longer this alignment. Between, for a while, we were trying to develop selected school communities, developing connections between schools and their surrounding neighborhoods. That's not a priority for us under this new plan. Um, but you know, if your if your organization has neighborhood activities and school based activities, I feel like Billy, please or Maya, please correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't think there's anything that would forbid you from from applying to both, right? I agree. It's just we will, you know, the a strong message from our board is that we have to become the regional grant maker in our practice that we say we are in our words. And so it would have to be a very strong proposal on both ends in order to, you know, secure resources that we could be using across the region. So not prohibited, but you have to make a strong case. And there are big changes in our school-based grant making for this year. So um if you aren't already registered for the, the session next week, specifically about our Stronger Schools program, definitely join that so you have a, a clear a clear picture on what we're looking for this year or the next few years. All right, Tasha, I see you have your hand raised. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, so one quick question. Uh, would, would a project that's phased be um, permissible? And what I mean by it, it could have started um, and then the second part would need funding um, and particularly thinking of a vibrant uh, project that we have on um, that's underway, but it's phased. Is that possible? I don't, I don't think it would be um, forbidden, but you know, it's a case by case sort of basis. So I think there's an interest in seeing outcomes, um, but you know, I feel like we'd be open to that conversation, right, Billy Maya? Okay, good, thank you. Thank you. All right, another chat question we have, is strategic planning costs a permissible cost? Uh, I would say uh, not under this current plan. It's not a strategic planning for organizations. Any sort of capacity building is not gonna be on our wheelhouse for the next few years, at least the next few years. Uh, Cheryl, I see you have your hand raised. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are, we have a green space in our neighborhood and the name, and it was actually sold to a developer to become a um, parking lot, but they've agreed to sell it back. Well, we've gone to a nonprofit and if we can raise the money, they will purchase it. Could we use this to purchase a green space under your green element of this grant? 
Hmm. I, I, I'll jump in to say that's considered a capital project. And so we don't help folks secure property. Um, we will help you green it after you receive it. And so that's just the practice of BCF. We have not been in capital investments. Okay. Well, it's it is it's a green space now. We're trying to save it because they're gonna they want to make it into a parking lot. You're in the was it in the adopt the lot program? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Wait, they just the Patterson Park Neighborhood Association came to us at Charm City Land Trust because we do green spaces. So we're trying to raise the money to purchase it. So we've been coming up with that same problem. There are a lot of grants out there for maintaining and developing and keeping green spaces, but we can't find one that will help us purchase this um, space to keep it a green space. Yeah, we've tried uh, at beyond the walls of our organization to kind of push the narrative that that's where neighborhoods need help too. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't been successful. It's just a place that philanthropy doesn't really get into. But it's something I think at least public dollars should be entertaining. But let me keep my opinion to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I have another question in the chat. Hello, are umbrella schools eligible to apply for grants? Um, Gabriel. Um, or Gabriel's place, would you like to come off of mute and kind of explain more about what an umbrella school is? Because I'm not familiar with the term, unless Billy, do you have an immediate answer? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so Gabriel's- Hello, everyone. How are you? Hi. Good. Um, an umbrella school, it's, um, I, I wanted to pull up the paperwork, but my phone died, which is why I had to find my tablet, hurry up and get home and find my tablet, and I jumped on late. So I'm glad you all are still here. Um, an umbrella school, it's um, a group of homeschoolers um, that have filed under the Maryland State, uh, under Baltimore City Public Schools. So they call it, they call it an umbrella school. So it's a school building. Kids go to school, they get report cards, but it's a group of um, homeschoolers. It's almost like a private school where they pay a tuition and they go, but the state of Maryland recognizes it as an umbrella school under the Baltimore City Public Schools. I see. And is it a 501c3 nonprofit organization? Because that's one of the key questions for compatibility. Um, no, this one, this one particularly isn't. My organization is a 501c3, but I was uh, also thinking about the uh, school that I work at. I teach. Uh, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math and science. And I was just trying to uh, see if maybe they will qualify also. Yeah, um, that's the first barrier is that and we need a 501c3 organization mm -hmm. to, uh, to be the recipient of the grant. Uh, okay. And then from there, it's, it's really a matter of the program match. Um, oh, okay. So, you know, we've, we've made grants to to uh, a few grants to private schools in the past that have produced neighborhood projects, mm -hmm. um, but um, it, it really would come down that the first step is the 501c3 match. And then from there, we can talk about a specific project and, okay. Okay, maybe maybe they could catch a later round. Yeah, perhaps it, uh, we're gonna be taking grants on a rolling basis. Um, and this is gonna be our, our, uh, our plan for the next three years at least, so. Plenty of opportunity. Okay. okay, thanks for taking my question. Sure thing. I have a great. Um, are there any other questions that folks would like to raise? Okay, Angela, so you got your hand raised. Hello, Angelo Solera from West Arthritis Inc. I was wondering if organizations that have received funding from the Baltimore Community Foundation in prior years can apply every year for funding? Absolutely. Uh, as long as there's alignment between our uh, grant making program and what you're trying to achieve, yeah, there's no there's no restriction on coming back year to year. 
um, you know, funding for the same program over and over again may be a challenge, um, just because that, that's just sort of the the preference of our board is to fund new programs from year to year. But um, the organizations, you know, it, you can come back as many times as you'd like. Just to note again that the difference here is that they are trying to spread the love. So um, you could have had a great program all these years and we love it, but it, we're not guaranteed to fund. As you guys know, we have to go through an approval process to get grants funded. And so if we keep showing up, you know, they're going to say, wait, who else came through? You know, so we're, we're, we're looking out for people we believe in, but we don't make the final decision. So keep that in mind. Any more questions? I can do the presentation again. <laughs> can I jump in and ask them a question? Yeah, Billy, come on. Yeah, well, well talk to us, y'all. What do you think about that? Especially if you came on here for a neighborhood focused grant. Um, we know that our language is kind of narrowed and specific. We're we're narrowing in on specific neighborhoods. We're narrowing in on projects that are joint collaborative types of projects. How do you feel about that? Does it feel limiting? Does it give us any feedback? We'd love it. I see Erica's got her hand raised. Yeah, I want to speak. Oh my gosh. So I personally am really excited about it because I just feel like it does give room for us to be creative to think about how it is we want to, um, you know, communicate our projects, but also think outside of the box, right? Um, so I do think that the grant itself is open enough to allow us to do that, but specific enough to really allow us to hone in our thoughts, make it concise, and really give our communities and our schools something that we can be proud of. So I'm excited at least to try for this. <laughs> Thank you. We got Cheryl. With her hand raised next. Yes, I'm really excited about it, even if it's not the project that I mentioned, but um, there are several others I think of that fall under um, safe and greening, especially when you said the doorbell cameras. So if not just the doorbell cameras, how about other cameras for safety in our neighborhoods? I just got off a meeting last night. We were talking about that, that um, we could collaborate with like, a couple of the neighborhood associations and work with Charm City Land Trust because because we can build these beautiful, affordable houses, but if the areas aren't safe, nobody wants to buy them. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I see Tasha has her hand raised. So I'm definitely excited, <laughs> um, especially for an organization um, at Dundalk Renaissance. You know, we span both the city and the county, and a lot of times funding sources are either either or. It's not never for both, um, and so that's always a hard lift um, when. It's, and then we also get the, the the other part is our physical offices in the county, but we work the city line all the way up to Bayview. Um, we meet where Southeast CDC um, leaves off uh, right there at Bayview. And so a lot of times, because our physical office is in the county, we get neglected on our city side. So I'm very excited. Thank you for, for making the change. Thank you. Thank you. And then Angelo, you had your hand raised next. Yeah, I like the flexibility that you have with different things you can do and it makes you being creative. When I saw the first three, I was like, oh, we are qualified. And then when I saw the last one, we talks about being vibrant or building vibrant neighborhoods. I was like, yes, that's that's what we fall. So I think it's, it's very broad. I think a, a lot of people can actually benefit from it because you give enough flexibility to really be creative, which also help us to sometimes uh, don't see the, the, the cup half full or half empty, but just to look what you present and then trying to figure out how we can figure it out so that we can apply for, for grants to do what you're requesting. So I think it's, it's pretty flex, flexible and that op, uh, provides opportunities for organizations like ours to, to apply for it. 
Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Uh, Johnny, I see if your hand raised as well. Yes, thank you. Um, and likewise, I'm just echoing what everybody has said. It's exciting to hear the level of flexibility. Um, you know, speaking from a grassroots perspective, we get, um, you know, I think a little discouraged in that we can't find ways to do those things that you mentioned, you know, whether it's lighting, cameras, you know, all the auxiliary stuff that goes into spaces that we work so hard to build through sweat and tears and sweat equity and all that. So just thank you for, you know, the opportunity to be able to fill in the gaps, um, you know, where they are in our community. So we appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else have any more feedback for us or have any questions about the, the presentation we completed? I did drop a link in the chat just so everyone knows um, with a registration link for our Stronger Schools uh, Grants Information Session. That'll be a week from today um, for anybody that's looking to straddle that school neighborhood line as well or anybody that feels like maybe they're a better a better fit for our schools program instead of the neighborhoods program accidentally registered for the wrong Zoom session or something like that. Um, Erica, I see your hand raised again. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just wanted to know where on the website would we find um, the dates for those quarterly meetings for the projects to be reviewed? Yes, this is on the apply for a grant page. So I can drop a direct link in the chat if you'd like, um, but that's the page that precedes our application. Um, it's got a little table. It's got the the dates for the for the um, for when the notifications go out and when you should plan to submit a um, an application if you want to be part of that round of funding consideration. Six, okay. Six. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Boy, oh boy, I've had a time trying to get this tablet and camera together today. It took me a second to find the mute button and the stop video button, so I'm laughing at myself. Um, my question is, um, I don't know if I missed, I, I, I meant if you all have mentioned it, but um, for collaborations, you said collaborations, you do not do collaborations with religious organizations, correct? Well, so we don't we don't fund religious or sectarian activities, but mm -hmm. many churches, many faith institutions in our city um, and, and county in our region are, are doing neighborhood pro programs and projects, and we'd absolutely welcome those proposals. And as a matter of fact, I just want to add uh, underrepresented, the faith-based organizations, there's a confusion there. Right. And, you know, some folks don't want to touch faith based. We do. You are part of the fabric of community if you're faith based. So we want to fund those projects. We're just not going to fund you, for instance, to reach people for Jesus. I love Jesus. <laughs> not that anybody has, but we're not going to fund that. Right. So and then real quick, why I am off of mute. I just want to say, please spread the word about this grant. What is bothersome is to know that some folks have information and they keep it from their neighbors. We want to support you and your neighbors if we can. So please, please, please share the links, share that this resource is available. The more demand that we see, the more we can push on our board to help us get more resources, right? We have, we're small grant makers, so we will run out, right? But the more we know that people res respect what we're trying to do and want to access this resource, it fuels us to be able to ask for more. Okay. So the so you can uh, I think that is a that is a good point. Most people don't share information, and that's that's kind of the chokehold on small nonprofits because there are um, resources out there, but not many of us know about it. I tell you, um, someone shared this with me, and I'm um, I'm expanding from Atlanta, so I'm new to the Baltimore area. And I thought that was that was just super great that someone gave me a resource. So I'll definitely share it. Wonderful. Thank you. And you you can partner with uh, faith based or faith based organizations. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Super awesome. Does anybody else have any questions or um, feedback about the program for us? Still have a few minutes left in our in our time here tonight.
I see it. Hello again, Erica. I'm so sorry. I promise this is my last one. I promise. <laughs> um, this might be specific to our grant that we would like to request, but I know that it's you're making a distinction between capital projects. So like one thing we'd like to do is put benches or, you know, seating options in a space. I know it's like a physical build for us to put like bench and planter benches in our space. Um, but would that be considered a capital project if it's not like a permanent fixture or if it's like bench seating that we'd like to add? I feel like that's totally, totally fair game. Um, it's, you know, when it comes to property acquisition, large construction projects, um, that's when things get dicey. But okay. you know, that, that that would absolutely, benches, planters, all, all I think, fine. Right, Billy? Absolutely. Like that is the elements of the project that makes it green and usable. Like what right. would you find and if we won't find your bench or your <laughs> seeds or your, yeah, we, we want to, we definitely want to find that, you know, you just got to tell the narrative to go with it. What it isn't just that we were able to support you to buy benches. What else did it do? And that's, what's going to be important for us as program officers and the program team to prove to our, our board this next three years. They don't want to just let us say, well, we funded benches. What happened as a result of those benches? Great. Thank you guys so much. I'm done for real. <laughs> Thank you. We Thanks. love it. We appreciate you coming back too. All right. Any further questions or feedback? Yes, Chris, if you were a home appliance, what a home appliance would you be and why? Hmm. Home appliance. Um, Johnny, what the world? I feel like I'd be an electric water heater. Um, yeah. That's just, I don't know why. I feel like I resonate with an electric water heater a lot. I like hot water and I don't like gas appliances. So there, there you go. That is the correct answer. Thank you. <laughs> all right well i'm happy to give everyone 15 minutes of their time back and uh like i mentioned this this video will be posted to our website um in the next few days we'll just trim out you know a couple of minutes of of smooth jazz at the start of it and um and get right to the presentation and it'll be on our website on our grant seekers faq we appreciate you guys thank you thank you you all. Have Thank you. Thank you all.